Hey everyone, I wanted to share this quick video on how I saved a new client over $8,000 from an IRS audit notice, formerly known as a CP2000 deficiency letter. If you've ever received a letter like this, it can be intimidating, but in this video, I'll show you how to analyze the letter, see if what the IRS is proposing is correct, and then how to respond accordingly. Later in the video, I'll share a tip on how you can avoid costly mistakes on your self-prepared tax returns. Hi, I'm Noel Lorenzana, and I'm a registered CPA. On this channel, I talk about simplifying taxes for individuals and entrepreneurs, which ultimately can save you money. Okay. So a new client named Mary contacts me very worried about an IRS notice she received. I calm her down and have her send me a copy of the IRS letter. Here's a copy of the letter. I've removed any personal information of my client. The first thing I look at is to determine if the letter is genuine. There are common scams with fake IRS letters, but this one was a real letter. When you receive a letter like this, read the letter and try to determine what it's about and which tax year they're questioning. In this case, the letter was for Mary's 2020 personal tax return, Form 1040. The letter says, we are proposing changes to your 2020 Form 1040 tax return. Proposed amount due, $8,476. Over here is a summary of the proposed changes. Tax you owe, 6,885. Substantial tax understatement penalty, $1,377. Interest, 214. Keep in mind that this is not a bill, it's a proposed amount due. On the second page, it details the reasons for the tax due. Down towards the middle, it outlines the explanation of changes. Mary had failed to report $1,171 of dividend income from Aon and forgot to include stock sale transactions from JP Morgan, of which she had a minimal gain. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but if you forget to include stock sale transactions on your tax return, the IRS may not include your cost basis or the amount you paid for the stock when calculating their proposed amount due. They may only calculate your stock sale proceeds. In this case, the cost basis was not reported to the IRS, so we had to send that information along with our response. So in this example, the proposed amount due was a lot higher than the actual tax due. In this case, Mary had stock sales with proceeds totaling exactly $25,000. But if you factor in her cost basis of $23,361 or the amount she paid for the stock she sold, she really only had a taxable gain of $1,639. In an instant like this, you don't need to amend the tax return, you just need to respond to the letter with an explanation. Here's a copy of the letter that was faxed to the IRS. This was faxed to the IRS on March 2nd. On May 16th, my client Mary receives another letter from the IRS as shown here. As you can see, the IRS has adjusted the proposed amount due to only $437, a reduction of over $8,000 from the initial proposed amount due. Not a bad outcome at all. Taxes aren't easy, but if you know what you're doing, they sometimes are. Do note that all the information you need on how to respond to the IRS are all outlined in the tax notice so carefully read it if you need to. Finally, if you wanna know how to avoid costly mistakes on your self-prepared returns, and I see them often, what you should do is create a relationship with a local tax professional and have him or her review your self-prepared tax return, for a fee of course. A second look from an experienced tax professional is invaluable in my opinion. This isn't a service that I normally offer, so don't ask me. Consider joining my free Facebook group where you can get your tax questions answered by a group of vetted tax professionals. The link is in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Before you go, consider checking out these other videos that I think you'll really enjoy. Thanks again.